to hear from you. So I don't want you to spend the evening hearing from me, um, but I'll give you just a, a brief background of the funding that we're dealing with here tonight. Um, then we're gonna do a little survey. Those of you who are virtual, will do a virtual survey. Those who are in person, you'll do a paper version of the same survey. Um, then we're gonna break into some breakout groups. Again, if you're here in person, you'll break out with us here in person. If you're virtual, um, don't worry if you're not Zoom experienced, basically you'll just get a box that pops up that says hit okay and it'll send you to your group and it'll bring you back when the time's over. So easy peasy. Um, we'll regroup after that and um, each group will report out what they discussed within their group. So um, we'll get a little recap together. We'll do a second survey. Same thing. If you're virtual, it'll be virtual. If you're in person, it'll be in person. And then at the very end, we'll just uh, close everything out and talk about what the next steps are for the ARPA committee and how we're going to use the feedback that you provided for us here tonight. Sound good? All right, so what you see this wheel little pizza pie here before you is our commission um, strategic goals they've been in place for many years now uh, as part of a strategic planning effort and every year we kind of revisit them and talk about whether they're still the the goals that we uh, want to focus on. Um, this is the umbrella strategic set of goals for the unified government commission. Um, when it came to ARPA we actually looked at this these umbrella goals and we sort of narrowed in. Um, on how to spend our ARPA money. So we needed to decide how we were gonna prioritize spending, um, what other opportunities were out there. And we'll talk a little bit about that later. There's lots of federal money floating around out there right now, but um, not all of it fits every little goal category. So we'll talk about some of those opportunities. And then we wanted to make sure that we were being transparent and providing regular updates to the community and obtaining feedback. So um, we came up with these values. These, are, these value statements are really about how we wanna make sure we're, we're serving the community, how we wanna be spending this money in a way that serves the community. I'm not gonna read these again. I didn't wanna spend a lot of time in this presentation. These are out on our website if you wanna read them in detail, or if you get really bored and you wanna look back at this presentation later, um, it, it is being recorded, you can pause it and, and read all of them. But um, we wanna be equitable, collaborative, innovative, and resilient. Those are our value statements for how we wanna spend in, in specifically these pandemic funds. And then we came up with the vision statement as well to go along with that again, not going to read to you word for word, but just uh, know that it's out there and available um, and it's guiding our, our thoughts. And, and all of this was, was developed by the commission as a whole before we broke out into a subcommittee. So the whole, the whole commission worked on um, the vision and goals and also on these three sort of goal areas. They're very broad goal areas for this spending. Um, the commission set out these, what we sometimes refer to them, if you've ever listened to an ARPA meeting, we sometimes refer to them as the buckets. So these three buckets of spending opportunities, these are the sort of broad areas we want to be expending our ARPA funds um, within, and we'll talk about them tonight a little more. And then here's just some additional information. Again, I know that's super tiny if you're here in person uh, to read, but just to give you um, an idea, the commission took those three sort of buckets and we had more specific goals or statements under each bucket objectives that we want to meet. The ones that are highlighted in yellow just mean when we did a little straw poll, those are ones that every commissioner, almost every commissioner supported in particular. So if you see community health and well-being, we don't have a yellow one. That doesn't mean it's not important. It just means there wasn't one specific one that had um, a particular level of support in the straw polls when we were formulating. All right, what you see before you, now we're getting into the nitty gritty of the ARPA. Um, uh, federal funding, as you might imagine, comes with a lot of strings attached and ARPA is no different and that there are specific ways we can spend this money. We can't just spend it on anything. We have to spend it on something that fits within the federal government's priorities. Um, we think our three buckets align nicely to the priorities that are available to us uh, within the, the federal government framework. But you can see here, um, there are just certain categories we can spend that money in. Now, I do wanna say for those of you here tonight, you don't need to worry about this. If you have an idea and you tell it to us and it does not fit within one of these buckets, we are not gonna tell you no. We're not gonna say we don't wanna hear it. We're gonna take that idea and we're gonna write it down and we're gonna use it wherever we can elsewhere in our budget discussion. So I don't want you to feel like you have to memorize this chart and only speak about things that are covered by the chart. We do not expect you to have that level 
of um, nitty gritty details about what's allowed in ARPA. If you have ideas, if you have thoughts, tonight is the night to share them. And if they don't fall within what's eligible for ARPA, we'll talk about them separately. We'll still take down that note. We still want your thoughts and ideas. And we'll just discuss separately as a committee how that might fall into to, to other budget discussions if it doesn't fit in our ARPA discussion. So don't feel like you need to worry about that. Um, there are a lot of other federal funds available right now. Some of those require a match, and it's possible that our ARPA funds could be used for some of those matches. Now, when I say match, I mean that the government saying we'll give you 80% of what it costs to do a project, but you have to pay the 20%. We have to have skin in the game. Um, so there are a lot of grant opportunities out there right now, and what, what we have to do as a committee and what's been crazy and, and staff has been amazing trying to help piece it all together. We have to figure out which grants are available, what can be covered by those grants, and then if we're going to apply for those grants, we're not going to fund them with ARPA, <laughs> but there are other things that maybe don't have grants available that we should be funding with ARPA. So it's, it's a whole puzzle that we're trying to put together to make sure we take advantage of every federal dime that we can. And this just outlines, again, no, it's really small for those here in person, but just give you an idea of all the different categories of federal funding that we currently know might be available. Now, it, every day, I think staff would be the first to tell you, it's a work in progress. Every day, there are new grants becoming available. There are new requirements on the grants that we knew existed. Um, there are just deadlines to keep track of and all these different parts and pieces, but staff is tracking all of these grants to make sure, again, that we're just taking advantage um, of every dollar that we can get that doesn't come from the pocket of our, our, our taxpayers. So this chart shows all of the funding that we've received from any of the different federal sources so far. Um, and it's just to give, give you an idea, sort of a broad picture of what that looks like. Um, we'll talk in a minute a little more about the CARES Act funding, which was the other sort of big set that we worked on as a committee um, here at the Unified Government, uh, and then just a whole bunch of other grants and things that have come through to help us both um, recover from COVID and to cope with COVID as we were sort of in the trenches. So, all right, this is our ARPA funding chart. And it shows what each of the jurisdictions within Wyandotte County have received. Um, if, if you might be looking at this thinking, gosh, I didn't even realize there were that many jurisdictions. We are a unified government, but we do have cities outside of our um, outside of our unified government that are still within our county. So Bonner Springs and Edwardsville received funds separately as city jurisdictions. KCK falls under what we're discussing here tonight, and so does Wyandotte County. So those two yellow ones, that's the money we're here to talk about tonight are the two yellow line items, Wyandotte County and the city of Kansas City, Kansas. And then it just gives you an idea over here um, of what other counties and jurisdictions uh, in the metropolitan area receive, just to kind of give you a broad idea of what that looks like. All right, oh, I went too far. Let's see if I can go backward here. That was like maybe the most important slide. There we go. <laughs> All right, and this is our ARPA, um, our ARPA funding chart to date. Um, we have expended some of the ARPA funds. It, I know it seems a little weird. Time seems to be going at such a strange pace right now. You're probably thinking, but we're not wearing masks anymore. And you know, we're, we're getting through this and COVID is looking a lot better. But you have to remember when we first got this funding, we were very much in, uh, in the middle of, of, of some of the peaks of COVID. Um, so we did expend some of the funds in, in what we refer to as immediate needs, um, as we were trying to figure out how we're keeping the Kmart site open, how we're handling vaccination, how we're marketing all of those services. Um, we had to have money to do all of those things. And so there's a set of money that has been already expended as what we call immediate needs. And then there was a second piece of money that was spent in addition to those immediate needs. I can't remember what we ended up calling them. Additional, additional immediate needs um, <laughs> that, that were, again, by and large funding health department operations. Um, what you see at the bottom is the funds that are available today for us to discuss and um, prioritize and talk about your, your dream, your vision, um, what you think we should be doing with this remaining ARPA money. So that is really the agenda for the, the um, evening here. And I want you to dream big and have crazy ideas. This is the chance to get all of those crazy ideas out there um and talk about what what you think is the strategy for these funds i can stop my share here all right 
I think we are now going to do uh, the first of our surveys. I'm not sure how exactly that's happening. So somebody, somebody tell me. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. I am Crystal McFetters, the public information officer for the unified government. And um, again, like Commissioner Markley said, thank you all for joining us tonight. Um, this portion of our evening, we're going to do a survey. We have two parts to our survey, but this first one, we're gonna kick off with five questions. Um, and like Commissioner Markley said, we want you to dream big, um, but we also wanna get your thoughts and your opinions about some things. So there's five questions and our people that are online, um, this has been dropped to you as well. And so I have the physical hard copies for our people in person. There's five questions, but I will note on question number two, um, it does ask about um, pick your, your top three. Can everyone hear me okay? Okay, your top three, and I would ask that you would list them in number order of one, two, and three, um, just so we can map that information out. And these same questions will be asked on our, um, sorry, on our second survey, just so we can do some comparison. So we'll take about 10 to 15 minutes to do our survey, and we'll convene and do some breakout sessions as well. So thank you. For our people that are online, if you don't mind raising your hand when you're finished, or if you're having any issues, please let us know. But we'll just take a few more minutes to finish up our surveys. Thank you.
This is Commissioner Davis. We cannot hear Commissioner Markley. Okay, I think I'm good. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Thank you very much. Uh, so we're just doing a little organizing right before we go into these breakout rooms. If you are virtual, you should see just a box pop up on your Zoom that'll say it's going to send you to a room and just hit OK, and it's going to take you to a virtual room with the people that you have been set up with. Um, we think we have facilitators in every room, but if for some reason you get into a room and nobody is nobody there knows they're a facilitator, um, we're all big kids. Just pick somebody in your room to be the spokesperson, and um, <laughs> we'll, we'll figure it out. Um, you may have fewer people than were assigned to your room originally because it doesn't look like every single person who signed on um, who registered for this event has shown up today. So you may not have very many people in your room. Mariah might be able to let us know if that's the case, and we may do a little bit of rearranging after we get you in your room. So um, I think that's it. See if they're ready for us. And if you're here in person, obviously, we'll probably do, maybe we'll just do one table, one table. Yeah, I'll take you guys. Melissa will take you guys. We'll be good. <laughs> we got the easy job when it comes to this whole fiasco, so. We were just noting that you will, even if you have a facilitator in your group, you should nominate a spokesperson in your group who will, when we come back out to do the recap, they will recap the comments from your group. Um, so keep that in mind when you get in your group, nominate someone who's going to be your spokesperson, and then you should have, if all goes well, a facilitator in there to walk you through the questions. We're ready to go. All right, you should see that box popping up soon. If you're virtual, like I said, just click OK. It'll take you to your room and you hopefully we're all going to have an amazing discussion. I'm looking forward to it. Hey, y'all, this is Commissioner Davis. Um, I still haven't been divvied out, and I don't think anybody else has uh, for those that are on Zoom. She's working on it, <laughs> so just give her okay. a minute. She's working on it. Okay, thanks, Commissioner Markley. Thank you for asking. No sound. Increase the oh, one second. Increase the sound. Yes. In the meeting. Hold on. Okay, let me bring that. Breakout rooms, we'll see what happens.
<sighs> Maybe I just can't do this here. I don't know. It's on there. It's probably just quiet right now. This Pink Floyd can hit it. Should we just have this be our breakout group or? It looks like more people are getting put in the rooms, I guess. Yeah, that works. I don't me. know if you can hear me or not, but we're working very hard to get you into your groups.
Welcome back. We're just giving everybody a few minutes to regroup. For those that are here in person, some of them are grabbing some snacks. So give us a second here. Madam Chair. I learned that the hard way. <laughs> she can hear me. Can you tell when they're all back? Okay. We think we've managed to get everyone from our virtual rooms back. Again, I appreciate your grace and your patience as we got you all into um, virtual rooms. Probably some lessons learned from that process for us on our end, um, but just appreciate your patience. Um, we had amazing discussions in uh, my group. I hope you all had good discussion as well. Uh, I know it's always different when you're in a virtual versus an in-person environment, but I hope you all had some good talks and brainstormed some great ideas. We are gonna get the full version of your notes from your note taker. So all the things you talked about will be in that note form um, and we'll get to see them all, but we do wanna get just for the, the benefit of the group here, um, we want to get the recap of what happened in each group during your discussion. So not too long, but just give us a quick recap of maybe the main ideas, the, the biggest priorities from your group. And we'll do that for each group uh, just to summarize our, our breakout session. So uh, group number one, which I think was the group Commissioner Davis was in. I don't know who has volunteered to report out, but whoever is going to report out from the Davis McFetters group, group number one. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, I will go very quickly. Can y'all hear me okay? Yes, sir. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right. Um, so yeah, our group, a uh, lot of great ideas, a lot of good ideas that um, I hope as a committee we consider beyond this process. But to summarize it, housing and mental health were the two uh, uh, topics that were the most common. And so there were a lot of other ideas, uh, uh, someone, a uh, community uh, quality of life plan, good supporting community outreach workers. There are a lot of them, but those were the two topics. The two solutions, uh, one was uh, uh, kind of um, uh, renovating a hotel and basically uh, retrofitting it to uh, address the needs of those that are houseless. Um, the, uh, and that's kind of our housing solution. The mental health solution uh, was bonus for mental health workers, uh, those that work you know, for mental health, for substance abuse, and things of that sort. That is a gross, gross um, <laughs> a, a, a summary, but that is what uh, our group did. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Commissioner. And I am so excited to see all of the notes come back from each group. And I just look forward to discussing those with the committee. I think it's gonna be so helpful for us for guidance and direction. So I look forward to that. Breakout room number two was with Kathleen and I'm told that Todd, Todd Jordan, is that it? Todd, I'm told you're the volunteer to report out for Kathleen's group. <laughs> or she might've volunteered you, I'm not sure. Ready? Todd, are you there? Todd might have gone to get dinner. I don't, I don't blame him there. <laughs> we'll see. If we can't get Todd, we're gonna have to volunteer somebody else from that group. <laughs> Anybody else from that group wanna give a summary? I'll go. Oh, let me. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, let me step outside away from children. Um, so our three top things were affordable housing, um, child care, and mental health. Um, those were the three that most everyone voted for. Um, help me with the solutions, guys. What did, did we even get that far? Well, we taught, one of the things that we really talked about was the fact that um, like community violence could be possibly be eliminated um, or at least reduced if affordable housing and childcare and mental health were addressed. So there's this almost a natural organic way of things. If people don't have a home, 
then that has other repercussions. If they can't afford childcare, that has other repercussions. So the continuum of things that happen um, based off of not having those foundational things in place is absolutely crucial. Great, great, great job, guys. All right, uh, group number three was with Commissioner Townsend, maybe someone else. I'm not sure who else might've been in there with her. Group number oh, three. Thank you, Madam Chair. We do have a scribe and someone who was going to come forward as a member and uh, make this Ms. Donetta Watson. And I thank her and all of the participants in group three. We had such a good discussion. We actually did not get to take but more than one vote. However, I will share with you based on the number of topics, overwhelmingly the issue of housing and the need for affordable housing in all of its variations. And, and by that, I mean, whether you need an upgrade in your home, there was talk about a uh, person supported by one of our stellar community organizations, Avenue of Life, who support people who are technically not on the street, but they may be in a hotel. So the end desire, of course, is to put them in uh, their own homes uh, and or apartments. There was also discussion about um, helping um, persons and what it meant to, what, what did affordable housing mean? And in one of the contexts, it was, discussed uh, in terms of dollars, which I find as a commissioner helpful because we hear this all the time, what's affordable housing? And what's affordable to me is, is not affordable to someone else and vice versa. So um, it was interesting to hear from uh, one of our participants uh, that affordable housing based on their um, interchange with their clientele was 650 to $900 per month, you know, so that was helpful to hear. And then of course, you've got the situations we talked about with the house less. So that issue overwhelmingly was number one with the bullet by vote, but also a close second were the needs for child care to find, uh, you know, affordable child care to help those who are in the child care industry who are leaving that industry because other entities post pandemic are raising what they will pay and providing bonuses. And that is taking people who were in the healthcare industry out of that industry. Uh, support of mental health needs and small business entrepreneurship in ways uh, you know, of, of being helpful. So uh, our scribe, Ms. Donetta Watson, I wanna thank her again and see if she wants to add anything else into this at this point. And again, thanks to everyone who's in group three and your, for your participation. There's only a couple of things that in the housing sector they were looking for um, more assistance in housing rehabilitation and housing repair, uh, tenants rights, responsibilities of landlords, uh, a lot had to tie in with the assistance with families with children and housing being the core of um, the, the needs for our community, as well as child care workers and providing more child care assistance and supplementation for child care workers and increasing the number of child care opportunities in the community and mental health as well. Thanks, Donetta. Great job. Uh, next is breakout room number four, which I think was with Alan House. It was, and uh, we didn't get to a uh, naming facilitator till the, or a uh, scribe till the end, so. I'll you're you're kind of quiet, here. Alan. Um, can you hear me? You can get the mic closer or talk louder for me. Is that any better? That's better. better. Okay, all right. Um, so there were a couple of kind of themes or areas that came through in the conversation, and it was really a, a really interesting, uh, it was a great conversation. Uh, probably top was housing um, that came through kind of loud and clear and that came through uh, really connected to mental health. Um, and, and so those two pieces were really tightly tied together, uh, supportive, uh, supportive housing, uh, the idea of a family shelter that could take more than 10 families and provide sort of wraparound services for families in crisis, um, the kind of the idea of emergency housing uh, for those who are you know, experiencing uh, homelessness right now, 
uh, as well as this you know, you know, transitional um, continuum of housing needs that people have. Uh, there were some specific ideas like a landlord risk mitigation fund um, to help cover costs that landlords might incur uh, that would be above and beyond a deposit for higher risk uh, renters. It's kind of an interesting one to try and pull more landlords into the rental, uh, the rental pool. Um, and this also this idea of a one-stop shop for wraparound services uh, for the community, which could be you know, adjacent to housing or connected, uh, integrated with housing, uh, but this idea that you can get everything at one place. Um, the other piece that kind of came through in multiple uh, forms was around utility costs as a, both a driver of homelessness and uh, kind of a real challenge for people. So that came through, uh, not necessarily you know, what ARPA could do or to address that, uh, but that was something that was mentioned. Uh, early education was another area. Uh, this was you know, ideas on more, kind of more quantity uh, of, of available early childhood education, as well as the challenges on recruiting and retaining staff um, for those and the importance of that for the, for the workforce. Um, workforce efforts was a, another theme that came through. So how do we uh, connect people to available jobs, um, whether that's through training and paying people to, to uh, while they're getting trained so that they can transition from a lower wage job to a higher wage job without having a loss of income in the middle that precludes that, um, as well as transportation and increasing the ability for people to get to jobs, uh, particularly on the weekends, it was mentioned where access to you know, higher paying jobs, for example, in, in Southern Johnson County, uh, if you might be able to get to a job and not be able to get home. So that idea of transportation is a real barrier uh, to opportunity. Uh, and then the last area that was mentioned was around violence reduction efforts uh, and you know, how ARPA funds could be used to support efforts within the community and within the schools. Uh, around violence reduction effort and conflict uh, mitigation training. Um, so a lot of, lot of ideas and a lot of robust uh, discussion and participation. So thanks to everybody that uh, was in that group. That's it. Thanks so much, Alan. Thanks so much to your group as well. All right, my group is next, group number five. And I think Aaron's gonna come up and take over the mic to summarize. So we had uh, a, a pretty wide ranging discussion uh, that hit a lot of the themes I think that we've heard. I would say housing rose to kind of the top for us too, um, but you know, heard things about youth services, uh, job creation, skills development, workforce training, um, a, a lot of talk about just kind of wraparound services in general and uh, sort of a, a social service environment that helps to uplift communities. Um, and then we also talked sort of about some of the systemic issues around how the funding is allocated apart from uh, just the topic areas in which it's invested. Um, some of that was around uh, supporting existing organizations that have capacity uh, like livable neighborhoods, or we talked about groundwork NRG, you know, on the neighborhood side of things, uh, organizations like Thrive or Mission Adelante, uh, just some of the nonprofits out there that are doing this work. You know, we talked some about sort of balance between nonprofit and government and, and that, that's a, a kind of functional issue in terms of maybe how you allocate funding, but maybe not as significant uh, as, you know, having it ladder up to some kind of strategy or plan. Um, talked about just the, the difficulty in kind of spending funds like this that have a timeline and deadline you need to create a process for, but, you know, there's this desire to have neighborhoods work together kind of talked about, or not neighborhoods, but organizations work together, you know, talked about a process that um, incentivized collaborative proposals, uh, things that were able to, um, you know, really be more strategic uh, and kind of build on, on work that's been done. Um, to go back to some of the specific areas a little bit, you know, I think we had a lot of creative ideas within housing. Um, interesting, you know, I didn't, I didn't hear our conversation talking about affordable housing specifically in the way that it's been mentioned in some of the other groups, um, although that was certainly a, a current of, uh, of interest, but you know, just things like you know, making sure we invest in roofs, um, which keep you know, building stock up to date, or making sure that we invest in storefronts, or investing in sidewalks that keep neighborhoods healthy. Um, and then some, some other ideas like you know, a neighborhood land trust or a community housing trust fund that could be seeded. Uh, they may not be direct infrastructure investments, 
or or immediate Band-Aid offsets uh, to um, uh, you know people who were having trouble affording rent or avoiding eviction, but maybe more systemic uh, and sustainable assets for the community for the long term. Uh, and then we also talked a little bit about uh, public health and healthcare infrastructure and what that might look like. Uh, talked some about digital access and infrastructure. Uh, and with that, kind of the difficulty in getting data around what the level of need was. I think that's another hard thing with a lot of these areas is kind of, you know, the, the immediate needs of a person who's, who's hungry right now or needs help is sort of easy to identify and then address um, the, some of the more systemic things, which is where you'd like to see investment are harder to have the data on at the ready and to address in a, in a quick way. Um, anything else from the group that I've missed? All right. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Commissioner Thank Arkley, for facilitating us. Yeah. All right. And last, we have Commissioner Bynum's group. And she's going to come up, it looks like, and provide the summary. We had some great discussions in our group. Um, we talked about some big ideas that, that aren't really one of the funding spending areas, but one of the biggest ideas I think that we uh, articulated at our table was perhaps the unified government could take a posture of starting with yes rather than no. Um, and that would be a shift in direction just for the tone and tenor of the way that we work with the community. We expressed that we want to ensure that we are not wasteful with the opportunities we have with this funding. It won't come around again often. Um, we talked about policy changes that could potentially be needed at the unified government. Um, one example of that would be with regard to housing, which did come up in our, in our uh, top three in order to do things like repurpose and a vacant building into housing that also provides wraparound services, obviously um, we might need to do some streamlining of some government processes in order for that not to take five years. Um, and then lastly, I think a, a big idea that uh, we enthusiastically embraced was applying for some collaborative grants uh, from other grant funding sources that might require a match that we could then use the ARPA dollars as the match and then stretch those ARPA dollars even further. One idea for that, which isn't in our top three necessarily, but I think it's really interesting. We talked a lot about repurposing vacant buildings, um, both for housing and business, small business purposes. So for example, you might be able to uh, apply for an EDA grant uh, and then use the ARPA as the match. But at the end of the day, the top three issues were the same ones that we've heard all night, uh, mental health, childcare on both the provider and parent side, a whole host of issues around the child care issue and um, the ways that the child care challenges are having a ripple effect in the economy. Uh, you all, I'm sure, discussed that. And then housing, uh, mental health, again, on both sides of that, of that issue, as far as provider and recipient, almost a stipend. So, so financial support for the providers but also perhaps a stipend on the recipient side to help pay. And we discussed that in both the childcare and mental health arena. And then um, housing is just the full gamut of anything and everything. We talked about um, the areas in the community where um, there's the open land. And this is not a new concept for the unified government. I've been here seven years and Angela's been here like a dozen. Um, and we talked about tiny houses and container housing, but again, uh, policy and procedure changes will be needed at the government level for these things to process 
sooner rather than later. But we had a great, great conversation. Thanks. Thanks so much, guys. It sounds like all of the groups had great discussion. Obviously, it seems like there are some similarities in some of those discussions, which is great for us to know. Um, and, and also some differences in some, um, some areas of discussion that were unique to each group. So that's exactly what we we're looking for and I really appreciate everyone's active participation in that process. Um, I will just mention, if you've been to some of our sessions in the past, it really has been like each person stands at the microphone and talks for three minutes and it can be, a, it's a little tedious and they're, they're laughing in here. Yeah, it's a little tedious for everybody involved, including the people who are at the microphone. Um, so this is, a, again, just kind of a new attempt for us. And, and I think um, if you read a lot of studies like I do, you know that all these studies show that when we're in groups and we're thinking creatively together, we come up with better ideas than we would have alone because we're building on each other's ideas. Um, so the idea was when you're up at the podium and you talk for three minutes, you don't get the benefit of building on each other's thoughts. And we wanted you to have that benefit tonight and to give us that benefit as we're looking at the information gathered tonight. So I appreciate your participation, your willingness to try out that new format. Um, we are going to do another survey in part to see if your, your thoughts changed in this process. Again, because we were in groups and you're maybe hearing things that you hadn't even thought of, you might go, oh, no, really, that is more important than what I thought was going to be the, the number one item. So same as last time, if you're virtual, you're going to see that survey pop up for you on the screen. If you're in person, you're going to get a paper version of a survey to fill out, and we'll take just a few minutes to do that. It's only two questions this time, Crystal says, so it'll be quick and easy. Okay, second one you still answer with one, two, and three, she says. Uh, Commissioner, if you're speaking, we cannot hear you. Oh, we were just kind of chatting it up over here. <laughs> Sorry. I, I was just saying um, this entire process, if you know Ashley Hand, who works here at the Unified Government, this, this entire process was her brainchild. And then um, she, had, she had an unexpected event and wasn't able to be here with us if, this evening. So I said, if you know her, let her know how you liked it and, and that it went well because she worked so hard to put it all together and then she didn't get to see the end result here with us tonight. I hope so, yeah. Well, and, and she she um, she was the one who said she was gonna bring cookies and she didn't get to bring us cookies because she couldn't be here, but we did get you pizza. So we hope that'll make up for the promise. <laughs> all right, are, are you doing good on the survey? Are we closed out here? more folks. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah. Um, Mariah was just telling us that she can actually share the results of that survey. Um, we won't have the in-person surveys tallied, obviously, yet, but for those that are on Zoom, when she gets our last responses in, um, she can show us those results just to appease your curiosity for the evening before we wrap up. So you're still working, finish up your answers, and then she'll let us know what the results were. I know. If you, if you are virtual and you have completed your survey, raise your hand or give some sign, thumbs up or whatever on your 
um, on your system there. It might be us as we're logged on. Okay. We think we we think we know where the missing surveys are. <laughs> we have some of us double logged in. We're logged in on the Zoom and we're here. We're here in person. So I would say let's just see the results. Okay. We can do it. All right, she's ending the poll. Drum roll, please. <laughs> Is that right? We're gonna to have to have the in-person right now. Just we need to see the virtual. She's working her magic over here. It's up there. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say, Kathleen, tell me and I'll yell it out through the mic. Okay, behavioral health, 62%. Behavioral health, 62%. This is for the in-person folks. You guys can see it virtually, but we, we can't see the screen, so. Here's the big one. Uh, child care. Child care, 59%. Affordable housing, 59%. And affordable housing, 59%. Those are the big ones. Those are the biggies. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks. Again, thanks for everybody participating in that second round of surveys as well. Um, and again, we are, as a committee, going to see all the data, not just the summary that we heard tonight. We're going to get the summaries from each group, the notes that were taken in each group, and we're going to get those survey results to help guide us in our decisions. Um, I will say, uh, as you may have discussed in your groups, we are going to put out an application form for for entities to apply for this ARPA funding. So many of you I know are involved in some of those entities that may be applying. Um, that should be happening over the next few weeks. Look for those announcements um, by social media. I think we may actually send that survey out to this group. So everybody who registered will get a copy of it. Share that with your network. Um, share that with anybody that you think might be interested. We want to make sure we get good coverage. Um, obviously, we'll be marketing it heavily here through the unified government, and then there'll be a window for those applications to come in for review. So um, just keep an eye out for that and help us market it so we can make sure we get the best possible applications from those outside entities that might want access to this ARPA funding to meet some of the goals that we discussed here tonight. Good. If you have questions after this, or if you just, after you hang up from the Zoom or you get home tonight, you think, oh my gosh, I should have said that. I have this great idea. Um, you're welcome to send them to one of us commissioners, but there's also an email address uh, just for ARPA that's probably easier to remember. It is ARPA, A-R-P-A at YCOKCK.org. So A-R-P-A at YCOKCK.org. If you have any questions or comments after you leave here tonight and you send it to that email address, um, our team will make sure that that gets to the committee so that we can review any additional thoughts that you might have. Um, again, just great job here tonight. I really appreciate everybody being a participant. And uh, again, also, I appreciate your patience as we tried out this new format tonight. I hope you liked it. And if you liked it, um, or if you have comments about how it could have been better, send those to the ARPA address as well, and we will implement, um, implement those suggestions going forward. All right, thanks so much, everyone. Madam Chair. Thank you. No.